Friday night hoop actions on the front end of a back to back. You see Bradley Beal showing love to one to Matthew's own Jeremy Grant. Unfortunately, that first half of this game told you one story. The second half told you a different one. And the final score is 124 to 116. The Wizards take a loss to the visiting Portland Trail Blazers as Bradley Beal gets love from his wife, Kamaya, and sons. Post game live with West Hall and Christy Winter. Scott will be joined by Chris. Drew and Megan momentarily and quickly. Um, but Christy, I need to know, like I said, tell the two halves. First half, Wizards up 18, and they end up taking the fall at the end. Well, I think it was a couple of different things, Wes. In that first half, Washington did a good job of taking good care of the basketball. They only had five turnovers, but there in that fourth quarter, they had seven turnovers in the fourth quarter alone. So that changed the pace of play, but also the defensive attention to detail in that second half was totally different than it was in that first half. You knew that Portland was going to play that horn set, but they were going to play it two steps off of the elbow extended up towards the half court line because of Damian Lillard's range and they played in drop coverage got beaten on that a couple of times but when it came down to it shots weren't falling for Washington on the offensive side but it started with their defense and it started with the preservation of their possessions they had those empty plays and those turnovers in the fourth when they needed to maximize their momentum but 39 points for Portland in the third quarter alone that changed the entire complexion of the game especially in the second second half and that gave Portland some confidence and momentum to win it on the road. And that's kind of what I was about to ask you about that third quarter because we sat here at halftime and I said we're up 18 but I'm curious right. because I knew there was going to be a run sure. and I knew it was going to come in the third quarter mm -hmm. and you said Washington had a 14 point deficit. What else happened on the Washington side of things that gave Portland that opportunity? Well, I, I think the ball stopped moving. I think what we said in the first half was that Washington had 18 assists on 25 made shots. That continuity didn't carry over in the second half. So you have to credit Portland's defense for being a little bit more disruptive and not allowing Washington to make the extra passes to make those clean looks. And I just think for Washington, the ball stopped moving and they also turned it over. So it was a combination of those two things. But I think for Washington now, just to turn right back around, like in mere minutes, to head to Brooklyn to get things back on track. I mean, they had six games in a row where they won. They played great, had seven players in double figures in the two games coming into this contest, but they just didn't have the continuity in the second half. It didn't contain, they didn't sustain it in the mm. second half uh, on the offensive side or okay. the defense. Side. Yeah, fair indeed. I want to bring in Chris and Drew from Capital One Arena to get their thoughts on it. Guys, we talked about a tale of two halves. That third quarter happened to be the difference maker. And Chris, as you talk about guys getting activated, we saw a couple of Blazers finally have their moment in that second half. Listen, Anthony Simons literally put the Portland Trail Blazers on his back in that third quarter at one stretch. He hit six threes, six of seven. And that allowed Damian Lillard to kind of be like, well, let me take a break because you know what he does normally in the fourth quarter. But Drew, this is a disappointing loss. The Wizards had 20 point leads 10 different times in this game. 10. That's very rare. And to give up that kind of lead, they got outscored 73 to 47 in the second half. Yeah, I think the offense was. I would say uh, it was flowing so good it actually became um, the biggest worst enemy towards you. the yep. end of the game because they were shooting lights out in that first half. Then when they couldn't get a, buck, a bucket, what did they do? They, lay, they laid up defensively, giving up 32 points in the second quarter, almost 40 points in the third quarter. They gave up 39 and then 34 in the fourth. So besides the first quarter, they really weren't locking in defensively. And I think that was the name of the game. If they would have got the stops they needed, we knew they could score the ball at will, but they did not get the timely stops on the defensive end, primarily in that second half. Guys, I know we were pregame talking about the big three and what they could do along with the others. The big three, KP, Kuz, and Bills, combined for 78 points, knocked down seven for 21 from behind the arc. It felt like there was something missing tonight. What did you see from the guys outside of the three of them? For me, it's flow. I think getting these three guys to play together, I still think as crazy as this sounds, 50-some games in, I still think it's a work in progress because when KP and Brad get going, Kuz kind of takes a step back and he's more rebounding and assisting. I want to see these three guys actually you know, be aggressive. Now, how do you do that? It's one basketball and you got three 20 point scores, right? But did you feel like that tonight where I think more clues was kind of like, let me 
let me kind of assess what's going on offensively? I feel like the Wizards thought they had this in the back, mm -hmm. and they thought that the Portland Trailblazers were going to lay down. They did not make the proper adjustments. We kept seeing time and time again. Chris, you brought it up. They're running that horn set high, and not only because of Damian Lillard's range, but the makes the rotations longer when he attacks downhill. And when he gets into the paint after that, the, uh, the high horn is action, those rotations are coming out the corner. Now you got open shooters in the corner. And some of those shooters in the slot sometimes was after any Simons, and they were just helping off of him too much. He's the hot man. Your help is not to help off of him. Your help is not to let him catch the ball. That's right. And, and Drew, when you played, like when you were in a flow on the offensive side, what was it that got your team to the ability to sustain that over time, not just yeah. one or two quarters? When you, we, it was a lot of scoring droughts. Now your defense can only hold up for so much, so, for so much long. I mean, so much time. Uh, especially in that first half with these players. I would like to see him get easier baskets. Uh, Porzingis, couldn't nobody guard Porzingis tonight. Get him right in front of the restricted area, right in the paint, two feet in, throw him the ball, and it's all she wrote. They were, uh, they didn't get the timely buckets that they needed or no, not even the timely stops. They could have made it a lot easier on themselves offensively. They would have took their time on that end. Guys, uh, I'm curious about Brad. I know we saw him dealing with a little bit of the, the leg in situation. I don't know exactly what it was. You guys were there. But he also was able to give you 34 points. What, what do you say about his performance tonight, Chris? Well, it's good that he scored 34 points. I'm more mindful of the second night of a back-to-back. -back. We're about to get on a plane right now, and we play less than 24 hours later. Special tip time, 6 p.m. tomorrow. So I'll be curious to see Brad on the plane, Brad in the hotel, Brad getting treatment. Will he be available tomorrow? But offensively, I thought he was in a really good rhythm tonight. The snatchback dribble was on point. Uh, he, he scored efficiently. But what does that mean going into tomorrow's game? We'll just have to find out. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, you don't want this loss to derail the momentum, the positive momentum this team has had as of late. Hey, put this little one away. Have temporary amnesia because you need that in this league. Go get one in Brooklyn. Do not let this loss derail the process. Guys, you're absolutely right. A quick opportunity to watch this one out of the memory banks. Chris and Drew, we appreciate you. Enjoy the show behind you. Megan, the same question goes to you. I've already you're... forgot about it. We're on to Brooklyn. <laughs> That's what I want to hear. <laughs> Megan, question goes to you now. Your thoughts on this Wizards loss tonight? Yeah, I think Chris and, and Drew alluded to it. It was just timely stops that unfortunately did not happen. But the other thing, too, remember, in my pregame, pre-tip hit, excuse me, I asked Coach Unseld ahead of this game what concerns him the most defensively with this team, aside from the obvious answer of Damian Lillard being Damian Lillard. And it was the defensive layers and the ability that this Trailblazers team has to not only put up threes and get to the free throw line, but the fact that they do it efficiently. That first half, if I'm not mistaken, the Trailblazers from three were four of 18. That second half, it was as if they could not miss. And then you heard Chris and Drew talking about it in, in that late in that fourth quarter. The Wizards got to the free throw line 20 plus times in the first half. They didn't get to the free throw line in that second half. So not being as aggressive in that first half, I thought was a big piece of it as well too. But for me, it goes back to Coach Unseld and his concern was the defensive layers and knowing that Simons and Dame Lillard, who he, he told me, those are the two he had the most concern with, with their ability to cross half and rise up from anywhere beyond the three-point line and the amount of times that they do it in the pick and roll situations as well too. So it came down to the defensive layers in the second half. I just didn't feel like the layers were there that they were in the first half. Uh, Christy, another question too. We've mm -hmm. talked about this earlier in the season about the others on the other team. Exactly. A guy like Trenton Watford tonight had 21 points, but the four games before that he's averaging four points a game. So my question is, how do the Wizards prevent that other person, no matter who it is on the on the other part of the other team's roster, how do you prevent that other guy from being such a difference maker tonight? Exactly. I mean, I was at the practice yesterday, and they were going over the defensive coverages, and obviously it's not just Damian Lillard that's a part of this team. They didn't have Nurkic tonight because of an injury, so they were different looking in terms of their ability to space the floor. And you can hear Drew Gooden say, hey, when they're running that high horn set, it is harder to recover to those corners, and that's where they were getting a bunch of their threes, especially in the third and fourth quarters. So when it comes down to protecting the others and making sure that everyone else is doing their due diligence, flying around and meeting the catch and contesting shots, I think you just have to be in full scramble mode on the defensive end. And I think Washington just didn't have that extra 
kick in their step in yeah. terms of having that defensive attention to detail as we were alluding to. But I think when they can space the floor like Portland did with their ability to have players who can knock in shots like Simons with six threes tonight, I just think it was just difficult for everyone else to, to scramble out of the coverages that they had. A hard hedge up high on Dame Lillard so he can't stop and pop or attack the mismatch and get downhill and get to the rim. They were working on all this yesterday, so it's not like it, it wasn't discussed. It was discussed, but there is an execution piece that I think wasn't sustained throughout the game on the defensive end, and that happens sometimes. Yeah. I mean, I coached, I played, I understand that that happens throughout a contest, but it just was Portland got hot in the second half as well, and Washington, they were missing the shots that they were making in the first half, and you saw it, especially in the fourth quarter, Washington was missing shots that they would make and it wasn't just the downhill at the basket shots which they did not make down the stretch of this right. game but it was their threes their mid-range game it wasn't there and yeah. for whatever reason they just didn't have it and for Kuz not to really get his game going he was 0 of 5 from three tonight that was tough because they needed that extra score for Washington to open up the floor and to play at the pace they wanted by getting the defensive stops they needed. And that's why I said that up top right here on the yeah. post game that, hey, we had to get those stops to be able to play at the pace that we were playing in that first half with those 18 assists on 25 made shots. Needed to duplicate that yeah. second half, and it didn't happen. Megan, when we, she mentions Kyle Kuzma, we know that he had a 12-point double, 12 double double tonight. But we've seen in these past three or four games where the first half, he kind of watches it a little bit, does what he does, getting other people activated. Was this the night where he, we might have needed him to do more on the scoring side earlier to really get activated out? You know, it's interesting because obviously that first half, they, as Chris had mentioned, multiple 20-point leads throughout this game, and, and they were leading big in that first half. So it was almost like it wasn't needed, needed to the extent as it was needed in that second half. So maybe he was a little comfortable. Who knows? But this is the thing, and, and Chris had mentioned it when you had him and Drew on just now. There's got to be this feeling out period. And because the big three hasn't played together as much as we would like them to, and I know that we're, you know, 40 plus games into the season, they still have to figure out how to play together. And I think the biggest piece of that is Kyle Kuzma figuring out how he can still have that impact of the 20 plus point scorer and, and you know, 10 plus rebounder and an assist maker and facilitator and, and be him. And that's tough because, and, and I'm gonna preface it by saying this, and I am in no way saying that they are a duplicate, but keep in mind when the big three of Miami, as in LeBron, Chris Bosh and D Wade first started out, it was tough for them to figure out how to figure out how to play themselves and be themselves, but also make sure that the rest of the guys were getting involved within that big three. So there was nights when D-Wade had, you know, a quiet night, if you will, or Chris Bosh did. But then there was nights when they had a loud night. So I think this is what they're now experiencing, and Kuz is going to figure it out. He's a professional basketball player. It's just figuring out his spots to still have that Kuz impact. And I appreciate it, Megan. Right now, I've got a chance for Wizards fans. Let's go to head coach Wes Unsell Jr. at the postgame podium to get his thoughts on tonight. Megan, don't move.